This presentation aims to strengthen and reinforce some of your skills to do with ionic compounds. By the end of the presentation, you ought to be able to write the formula of an ionic compound if you're given its name. Uh, and to be honest, you ought to be able to name the compound if you're given its formula. You'll find you have a bunch of what's called polyatomic ions to memorise. Uh, you'll see those as we go along. And you also need to be able to do a dot cross diagram to represent the uh, bonding in an ionic compound. And you need to be able to do a diagram to show the structure of one layer of an ionic lattice as well. To work out the formula of an ionic compound, um, you need to know the charge on the ions. And we'll, we'll start with the metals. Um, hopefully by now you've picked up that the metals form positive ions and they do so by losing their outer shell electrons uh, in order to get down to uh, the sort of full uh, shell below. So um, we'll start with the group 1 metals uh, and uh, hopefully you remember that these form 1 plus ions. They had one outer shell electron, they lose it. If you lose an electron you become positively charged. Um, so losing one outer shell electron, one plus charge, that gives us ions like sodium, uh, Na+, potassium, K+, lithium, Li+, and so on. Uh, on that basis, the group two metals, um, hopefully no surprise, you should be able to figure it out. Two electrons in the outer shell, so we get the two plus ions, calcium, Ca2+, magnesium, Mg2+, and so on. And on the same basis, al uh, aluminium in group three, three plus ion, three outer shell electrons, which it loses, Al3+. plus. If we turn our attention to the non-metals, um, we don't really tend to talk about ions for group four. Um, they, because they're sort of half full shell, uh, you don't really get um, the you don't get ionic uh, bonding. Um, so instead, we'll look at group five, and now instead of emptying the outer shell. Uh, we are going up uh, to the stable 8 by gaining uh, electrons. So for group 5, we need 3 more electrons, and so we'll get 3 minus iron, uh, things like the nitride iron, N3 minus. Group 6, we only need to gain 2 electrons to get up to the stable 8, uh, so 2 minus. Remembering gaining electrons gives you a negative charge, um, and so gaining 2 electrons, 2 minus. Um, so things like the oxide iron, O2 minus, sulfide, S2 minus, uh, and so on. And then group 7, only one electron to gain now to get up to the stable 8. Uh, so 1 minus ions, things like the fluoride iron, uh, F minus, chloride, Cl minus, bromide, Br minus. Note the way that uh, the metals just keep their name unchanged when they make an ion. But the non-metals uh, get this eyed ending. If it's just the uh, single non-metal atom on its, uh, <coughs> on its own. So we've looked at some ions that you simply can work out the charge on based on their position in the periodic table. But unfortunately there's others um, where that really doesn't work. And those ones um, you're just going to have to remember. There's a distinct set of them that you're expected to know. And they're shown in the table here. So we've got these, what you might call polyatomic ions, the ions with more than one type of atom in, things like sulfate, nitrate, carbonate, uh, and so on. And note that um, they tend to end eight rather than eyed, so with these non-metal ions with oxygen, um, there's this eight ending. So a sulfide ion would just be S2-, uh, but sulfate uh, with oxygen, SO4-. There's some other ones uh, that aren't the polyatomic ions, like the silver Ag+, the zinc Zn2+, uh, and the hydrogen being either H+, or H-, um, that you'll need to memorise because uh, you, wouldn't just, you wouldn't get that from looking at the periodic table necessarily. So this is a case of memorise. You might want to make yourself some kind of little uh, flashcards or something and, and just do something to commit them to memory as quickly as you can. Once you know the formula and charge on an ion, um, you should be able to put those together to make the formula of an ionic compound. And uh, as it says here, the key thing is to balance the charges on the ions. You can't have an overall positive or negative um, ionic compound um, in, well, certainly the cases that you would be uh, dealing with.
Um, so let's take some examples. If we think about sodium chloride, we so we need to think what are the ions here, and from what we've already said, these are ones that you can just find in the periodic table work out. Sodium group 1, Na+, plus. chlorine group 7 makes the chloride ion Cl-. minus. Um, and if we look at these, we've got a 1 plus charge and a 1 minus charge. So those do balance. Overall, 1 plus 1 minus adds up to 0. Um, and so we can have a straightforward 1 to 1 ratio with the ions here. And we get the formula NaCl. Taking another example, uh, let's look at calcium fluoride. Maybe you want to uh, pause the video here and actually see if you can work this one out yourself before I proceed. So calcium group 2, Ca2+, plus, fluoride group 7, uh, F-. minus. So now we have a situation where the charges don't balance. We've got 2 plus and 1 minus. Uh, and so we'll need a 1 to 2 ratio here. 1 calcium to 2 fluoride ions. 2 fluoride ions adding up to 2 minus balances out the 2 plus on the calcium. And so we can write the formula as CaF2. Uh, note... In these ionic formulae, the uh, number of each ion is, is written as a subscript after the ion, uh, not a big number in front of the ion. So the two fluoride ions, uh, F and then the subscript 2. Let's take another example. Sodium carbonate this is using one of our polyatomic ions that you need to have memorized, the carbonate ion. Again, uh, pause the video, um, see if you can work out the formula of this one for yourself. So the ions here, Na+, plus, and the carbonate, CO3, with the 2- minus charge. Again, charges don't balance, so we're going to need two sodium ions for each one carbonate ion. And so we'll get the formula Na2 and then CO3. Note the 3 there is just part of the formula of the carbonate ion. That doesn't mean 3 of something, uh, 3 carbonate ions. That's just one carbonate ion. Another example, magnesium nitrate. Again, pause the video, see if you can figure it out for yourself. So you should have got these ions, the Mg2+, NO3-. So we've got, again, this not unbalanced situation, a 2 plus charge, a 1 minus charge. So ratio here will be 1 magnesium ion for 2 nitrate ions. And so when we come to write the formula here, we're going to see brackets for the first time. In order to write the nit two nitrate ions in a way that um, isn't confusing, we'll put brackets around the NO3 um, and the two outside that, just to show that there's two of these whole nitrate ions. A final point to make with the formula of ionic compounds is that you um, sometimes get these what are called hydrated compounds, uh, which, which the formula looks a bit funny. Here's an example. Uh, this is hydrated copper sulfate. Um, and so you get a normal sort of looking ionic formula, the copper sulfate, CuSO4. Uh, but then this dot 5H2O. Uh, what this means is that there's five water molecules uh, included in the structure for each copper ion. So the water molecules are literally sort of dragged into the ionic lattice uh, with the copper ions when the crystals form. Um, and uh, the significance of this really is, is when you come to work out the molar mass of the compound because the, the water comes along for the ride so you've got to take account of its mass and so the molar mass of hydrated copper sulfate you can't just look at the CuSO4 alone you've got to put in uh, those five water molecules so the way you do that is you literally add up the one copper, the one sulfur, the four oxygens and then if you work out the mass of an H2O molecule, you have five lots of that um, get added on. So if you want a little challenge, uh, you can pause the video at this point, work out what you think the molar mass would be there for the uh, copper sulfate pentahydrate, as it's called, show those five water molecules. And depending on what periodic table you used, uh, you might come up with just slightly different uh, value, but round about the uh, 250 mark for the molar mass there. Another key skill for ionic compounds is to do the dot cross diagram and um, here there's a very distinct method of doing this and, and the big risk is that you get this confused with covalent dot cross diagrams showing sharing of electrons. 
Um, so do, do make sure you think when you're asked to do a dot cross diagram, look at the formula of the substance. Uh, what is the type of bonding? Is it covalent? Is it ionic? So we're thinking about ionic compounds. Here's a classic ionic compound, calcium bromide, metal, non-metal. Um, and so let's do the dot cross diagram for calcium bromide. We put the two ions separately in square brackets. Uh, so we'll do, the, we'll do the calcium first. The metal uh, always just goes uh, in its in square brackets. Uh, you don't bother sharing any, showing any electrons around it because it's lost its outer shell electrons. So nice and simple. Um, and then outside the square brackets, top right as a superscript, you put the charge on the ion. So calcium, group 2 element, two outer shell electrons, which it's lost to make the ion so 2 plus charge. For the non-metal, uh, again we put it in square brackets. This time we do put electrons around it. Um, and for the bromide ion, bromine's in group 7. It's got seven of its own electrons, which we've shown here as crosses. Um, and then we fill that up to 8 using a different symbol, which of course is the electron that it would have gained uh, from the calcium. Again, we need a charge outside the brackets, uh, top right, uh, so minus... Uh, the charge on the bromide ion, 1 minus, and then to the left of the bracket uh, we can put uh, a number to show how many of those ions are in the uh, formulae, uh, formula for the substance. So the uh, CABR2 says there's two bromide ions for each one calcium ion, so we put the 2 in front of the bromide ion. Here's one for you then. Uh, pause the video at this point and uh, see if you can figure out the dot cross diagram for potassium oxide. Hopefully you came up with the formula K2O based on potassium being a K plus ion, a group 1 element, and the oxide being O2 minus because oxygen's in group 6. And that would then give us this dot cross diagram. This time we need two of the potassium ions for each one of the oxide ions, so there's a two to the left of the potassium ion. And again, the potassium without any electrons around it, having lost its outer shell electrons, one plus charge superscript on the right. The oxygen has six of its own electrons, shown as crosses here, wouldn't matter if it was the crosses or the dots with the oxygen's electrons uh, being from group six, and then two more to make it up to eight, shown as dots, and the two minus charge uh, at superscripted at the right. Finally, for the ionic compounds, you need to be able to draw uh, a diagram to show one layer of the lattice structure that the um, solid ionic compound has with the ions packed together. Um, and this, you only need to be able to do this for uh, compounds with a one-to-one -one ratio, otherwise it's um, rather more complicated. Um, so let's look at uh, exactly how you do this. Uh, taking as an example uh, the compound strontium oxide. So we need to draw this regular rows and columns of alternating negative and positive ions. And you always, when you do this, you always draw the negative ions as larger and the positive ions as smaller. Uh, and then we need labels for this. So uh, with the positive and the negative ion, uh, we can just put on something very clearly to show exactly what that ion is. Uh, so not just saying that it's an oxide ion and a strontium ion, but actually just showing the, the symbol and the charge, O2- minus for the negative ion and Sr2- plus for the positive ion. Um, the, only, the only other question about this really is how much lattice do you need to draw? Uh, and the key thing is that you draw at least one negative ion, uh, like the one with the arrow to it here, where you can clearly see four positive ions arranged around it. And within the structure, again, you draw at least one positive ion, like the one with the arrow to it, where there's four negative ions around it. Of course, in reality, this is just one layer of the structure. So there is actually six uh, of the opposite charge ion around each ion, because there'll be one front and back, as well as the ones drawn above, below, to the left and to the right that you see here.